Hey guys, and welcome back. Now that we've got our virtual machine set up and we've ensured swap is disabled and we've renamed our node here, let's go ahead and take a look at what the next steps are in order to get Cube ADM installed on our system. So I'm gonna head back over to our Cube ADM documentation here. And we've already ensured that we have a unique MAC address. Uh, of course, we're only dealing with one node here, uh, so we don't really need to worry about that. And MAC addresses are pretty much always unique, um, not something you really need to check, but they do provide the commands that you can do to check that, as well as the product UUID on a Linux system. So the other thing we need to do here is to configure IP tables, and they provide the steps to do that right here. It's basically going to load a kernel module called brnetfilter and ensure that these bridging options are enabled in our configuration for that module. So let's go ahead and open up the or copy this to our clipboard and then we'll switch over to our terminal and paste that in. And then once our IP tables is configured here, we can go ahead and move on. Of course, there are a variety of different network ports that you'll need to ensure are open between nodes. And in this particular case, we're only dealing with a single node at the moment, so we're not going to be doing any inter-node configuration. However, you will want to ensure that your control plane nodes have the following ports open. You've, of course, got 6443 for your Kubernetes API server. That's what kubectl is talking to in order to manage the cluster. For etcd, you have ports 2379 and 2380 for the etcd server API. You've also got the kubelet API at 10.250, and then 10.259 for kube scheduler, and 10.257 for the controller manager. So if we were running multiple nodes, then we'd wanna go back to our security group in Amazon VPC here, and we would want to ensure that we have rules set up to allow all of those different ports. So if we, for example, wanted to access uh, let's say kubectl across port 6443. We'd go ahead and do a new security group rule here for TCP 6443. And then we'd specify either the CIDR blocks that we want to allow to access it. We could do something like 10.77 slash 16, and that would allow anything from our VPC here. Or we could go ahead and choose the security groups that we want to allow to access. So if we created a virtual machine that had the default security default security group, uh, we could go ahead and just assign that, and then that would allow anybody who has that default security group to communicate with port 6443. But because we're just dealing with a single node for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel that. And so SSH will be the only port that we are allowing inbound access to at the moment. Now they do provide a telnet command that you can use in order to validate connectivity, but at this point we don't have any services that are actually listening on TCP 6443, so you'd actually have to install the cluster node first and get the API server up and running, and then that would be listening on 6443, and then you could use this telnet command to validate that you actually do have connectivity to that port on a particular node. Now, one of the other things you'll need to install is what's known as a container runtime. And the container runtime is essentially what Kubernetes is going to use to deploy pods into your cluster. Now, you do have several different options that are available. You can use the Docker engine, you can use the containerd project, or you can use the container runtime interface here as well. I'm gonna be installing Docker, and we're gonna use that as the container runtime. So essentially when Kubernetes wants to spin up any containers, it'll actually be using the Docker API in order to do that. So what we're gonna do for now is just go ahead and head back over to our virtual machine and we'll do a sudo apt-get install docker.io dash dash yes. And then once you've got the Docker engine installed, you'll want to go ahead and just make sure that your Ubuntu user account is able to communicate with a daemon just for verification purposes. So in order to do that, we need to actually add our user to the Docker group. So the installation process creates the group called Docker, and anybody who is in the Docker group will have access to manage the Docker daemon. But by default, if we try to run a Docker command, you can see we don't have access to it. So we'll do a sudo usermod dash dash groups docker dash dash append, and then the username that we want to append the Docker group to, and that's Ubuntu. And so we'll go ahead and run that command and we'll just run exit and then we'll SSH back into that virtual machine so that we can 
continue working on it. So let's do groups now. And we should, in our groups list, see Docker. Sure enough, there it is. So now if I run Docker PS, you can see I'm able to communicate with the Docker daemon. You could also run Docker version or Docker info. Both of those will verify that you have connectivity to the server component through the Docker socket as well. So once you've got your container runtime installed, let's go ahead and see what's next. So now we need to actually install Kube ADM itself, and that's the utility we use to initialize the cluster and join nodes to the cluster. And then we also have the kubelet, and the kubelet is that component that registers our nodes with the cluster. And then we finally got kubectl, which is the command line utility that we use to communicate with the API server once that's been installed. So there are a few different steps that we need to run through in order to install these components. First of all, we need to install these components right here. So we'll go ahead and just paste that in. And then once the CA certificates and curl and everything is installed, we can go ahead and download the Google Cloud public signing key. This will allow us to talk to the Google Cloud package repositories from our Linux VM here. And then finally, we'll go ahead and add the apt repository for Kubernetes in particular, which uses that GPG key. And we'll go ahead and paste that in. And then once that repository has been configured, we now need to update our apt cache. So we'll go ahead and do a sudo apt update. And then once our package cache is installed, we can then install all of these components with a single apt install command. Let's do apt-get install on kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl. And as you can see, those components are getting installed. And it'll show you the version numbers of each of those that's getting installed. So it looks like we're going to be using Kubernetes version 1.23. That's the latest as of this recording. So now the other thing you want to do is use apt-mark here in order to hold those packages at their current version. And so basically we're going to pin version 1.23 of kubelet, kubeadm, and kubectl on this particular node. And so that's basically just setting a flag indicating that if a new version of these packages comes out, we do not want those to be upgraded unless we explicitly unhold them and then actually perform the upgrade ourselves once we're ready to do that. So that helps just ensure consistency on the version of Kubernetes that's going to run on your cluster here. All right, so now we are just about at the point where we can go ahead and use Kube ADM to initialize our cluster. And we'll do that in the next video. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.